In this video today, I'm going to be sharing with you how I quit the nine to five and have been living my most abundant, freedom-filled, travel-filled life ever since. My intention in sharing this story time with you today is that if you're someone who's watching this video with a little inkling in your heart that this type of lifestyle is meant for you, that you know that it's possible, that this video provides you with evidence that will support your belief systems in knowing that you are capable of achieving any of those beautiful desires on your heart, whether it is to work for yourself, to have more freedom, to travel the world, to be able to say yes to your dreams coming true. When I was younger, I had a desire on my heart that was always to travel the world, to see the world, to have a beautiful array of different experiences, to immerse myself in different cultures, to have a life of pure adventure. And I also had this knowing at a young age that I would be working for myself one day. Even though I didn't fully understand the working world, I just knew and I had this dream on my heart that I would be able to be myself and be able to create means for myself, be myself and help people and be able to have that sustain me living a beautiful freedom filled travel filled life. And that has been the result of me taking some big leaps in my life, which I'm going to be sharing with you. Over the past eight years of making this leap into entrepreneurship, I have lived in Italy, Canada, Indonesia. I've also spent the last year and a half living completely nomadic, led solely by my intuition, which is probably another video in itself. Let me know if you guys would like to hear that one. Where this began, as I mentioned, was having these desires on my heart and bringing them into clarity knowing that this is something that I truly want and I don't want to spend my life wondering what if. I don't want to spend my life continuously watching YouTube videos of people traveling the world or daydreaming. That was definitely the case. I was working in the city of Toronto the year before I decided to make my leap into entrepreneurship without fully knowing that that's what I was doing. So I knew that I desired to create a big change in my life. I was not happy in my present circumstances of working for someone else and working in corporate marketing. I was paid an entry level salary that felt very limiting. It was definitely a paycheck to paycheck lifestyle. At that time, I started to take on some freelance marketing clients. But to be honest with you, I was really burning myself out because let me know if you guys can relate, but working a nine to five and when you are in marketing is sometimes more like an eight to seven and eight to nine and you're not getting paid for that overtime. So it felt very limiting when I would think about my dreams and my goals of traveling the world, knowing that I only only had let's say two weeks vacation in a year that I was living paycheck to paycheck that I desired to go to Europe from Toronto which I would love to go on a trip much longer than two weeks or a week so as I would work from my desk for my marketing job I would be putting on YouTube videos of different locations in the world and this travel bug or this desire in my heart just kept building and this is the first time that I actually discovered what a digital nomad was. This is about eight years ago now. So just got introduced to YouTube at the time as in watching vloggers and watching other people live their lives. And the topic of entrepreneurship was really starting to spark something in me. And so I was reading books like The 4-Hour Workweek by Tim Ferriss. And that curiosity kept building. And I just kept fueling that knowing in my heart that one day I'd be able to do that. One day I'd be able to travel for a living. That I would actually be able to get paid to travel. I knew that I had a creative eye at this time. I'd started a YouTube channel and I'd started to create a little bit of income online. I remember my first YouTube paycheck was about $300 and I was stoked because I realized that if I could grow this, even though that wasn't my intention in starting YouTube channel at the beginning, if I could continue to grow this, continue to grow my freelance clientele and continue to explore other endeavors, I would eventually be able to replace the income that I was making from my nine to five job. The ideas kept sparking. I would spend all of my weekends putting in time, filming YouTube videos and just starting to build momentum in that way. And as I started to get excited about possibilities for myself, the workplace started to become more and more resistant. As in there was conflict there, like between me and my bosses, I just was not happy. And I would often cry on my way home from work just because I was so filled with anxiety. I did not like the work that I was doing. I felt unappreciated in the workspace, X, Y, Z. I think 
Uh, a lot of people in entry level might be able to relate to this because you're sort of treated like you can be replaced at any time. And as you continue to raise the caliber of work that you're producing, it's like they expect more and more and more of you into this point where it doesn't feel like it's humanly possible without completely burning yourself out. And I just knew that it was not sustainable. And one day, I was walking home from the office late, might I tell you, that there was no compensation for this. I was in tears. I was in tears because there was some type of conflict with my boss. It was a very toxic work environment, not really something that I want to get into. But I was in tears on my way home. And I remember that I just knew that I had to make a decision for myself. And what was on my heart was Italy. About four years before, four and a half years before, I backpacked Europe solo and I landed in Rome And instantly I fell in love with this city, knowing that the next time that I returned, I wanted to live there for at least a full year because there was so much history, so much art, so much food, so much culture, so much everything to be explored. And I solely wanted to immerse myself into that. And so I made a promise to myself. I totally tossed a coin into the Trevi Fountain and made a serious wish. Let me know if you've ever done the same. This was definitely inspired by the Lizzie McGuire movie, one of my favorite movies because of the influence that it had on my life. So I ended up getting home from work that day and I started Googling flights Toronto to Rome. And I found one three months out in September for about $500. And I had about $500 limit on my visa at that time. So I booked this flight on my visa. Didn't know how I was gonna pay for it. Didn't know how that was gonna happen, but I booked that flight. And let me tell you, that decision was so empowering for me because I went to work the next day with a completely different aura. I was so much lighter that I had made this decision for myself again. I did not know the how. If I were to lean into the uncertainty and the fears, yeah, that would have been very scary. But I knew that there was no other way. I just knew that I had hit this end, that my dreams were not going to be made possible unless I took a serious leap. And I'm not saying go book a flight on your credit card right now. But what I'm saying is that if there is a desire on your heart, you will most likely get to this point where you just know that you are the only person who's going to come save you and you've got to create that change for yourself. So I took an investment in myself. I took a leap of faith and I booked this flight and I started then on this project of decluttering and minimizing my life down to a suitcase because I knew that I was going to have to sell everything to move and I was going to have to figure out different ways to create income for myself to be able to sustain a lifestyle. So in those three months, it was super fun. I documented the whole thing on YouTube, which is still here on my YouTube channel. I've got playlists that are, you know, minimalism and moving to Italy, which I explain everything. And I just went for it. I I had not known anyone else who had done that before making a move to Italy such as this, but I did see people on YouTube who were traveling for a living, who are making enough money on YouTube to sustain themselves. And that felt very inspiring to me. Eventually September came and I was on that flight to Italy and what ended up happening was that with my freelance clients plus the YouTube income that I was making, it wasn't enough money to live on my own. So moving there on a working holiday visa, I actually was an au pair for 10 months, which means that I left my corporate marketing job to nanny for 10 months. And I told myself that in these 10 months, I was going to figure out a way to make it work. I knew that when I left my nine to five, that that was the last time that I was ever going to be in that type of situation for myself because it felt so soul sucking. To be honest, it just felt like it drained my energy. It was draining my life force. I was not utilizing my gifts. I was not operating in my purpose. And that just was not sustainable for me to maintain who I am and my joy and my lust for life and you know my dreams what ended up happening over those 10 months was that I decided to continue with my YouTube channel film videos all the time produce about two videos a week or more I would have a lot of fun showcasing living in Italy minimalism was a big topic on my channel I just was creating videos about what I was passionate about at this time I had about three freelance marketing clients and I was getting uh, 80 euros per week I believe it was as an au pair so I was making some money definitely not enough money yet to sustain myself but as my YouTube channel grew a different opportunity started to present themselves and I started to 
to have YouTube sponsors come in and make more AdSense money each month. That felt really good and sustainable. There was still sort of this feeling that I was working for other people and there was a strong desire to eventually work for myself. I knew that I wanted to be a life coach one day and that I wanted to create digital courses, but I had no idea the how about that. So I just let the steps unfold, but I hustled. What would happen was I would get up early in the morning and I would get the the twins, they were twin boys, ready for school. And while they were at school, I would create videos, I would work, I started writing my first book. And what was interesting was that in the winter time of that first year that I moved to Rome was that the documentary, the, the Minimalists or Minimalism had come out on Netflix and it was super popular. So people started to type in like, what is minimalism or minimalist in YouTube? And one of my videos specifically went viral. And I remember I was actually in Denmark visiting my family for the holidays and I didn't have Wi-Fi for a couple of days. I signed back onto my YouTube channel. I had all these notifications. I had tens of thousands of new subscribers and I was like, whoa, what happened? And I saw that my video went viral. Shortly after that, I had a publisher reach out to me and offer me a book deal to write a book about minimalism. At that time, I'd already started writing a book. It's called Beauty and the Breakdown, my first book. It was basically about how I got out of an abusive relationship and within one year made that move to Rome. It was like rebuilding myself, realigning myself with the clarity of the desires on my heart and choosing to make that so. So I had already started writing with the intention of self-publishing, but I manifested as a byproduct because I was in that energy, a, a three book publishing deal with a company, which I published a book on minimalism and one on a self-love affirmations. And this was such a whirlwind for me because this was a book deal that I signed to write these two books in a matter of about a year and a half or less. I also self-published in that time. So there was a lot of projects. I was hustling. I was drinking about eight espressos a day. I don't know how I made it all happen, but I made it all happen. In this time too, I started to attract free travel experiences and then paid travel experiences and paid sponsors from a YouTube channel. So the income started to grow and I realized that this was enough for me to sustain living on my own. I ended up living in Rome for a total of three years. I had to get two additional visas in the working holiday one because I was only allowed that for one year. And those visas were the student visa. So what I would do would I would pay for Italian language classes a year up front so that I could live in Italy. So I could obtain the visa to live in Italy for two additional years. It was a lot of fun. I had the time of my life. I got to see so much of Europe and have some beautiful experiences and opportunities. But what I will say is there was still this desire to work for myself. I realized through different changes and pivots that I didn't solely want to rely on YouTube as my main source of income or having sponsors come in because I didn't really like that uncertainty. I wanted to be able to be in more control of the value that I was providing and be able to achieve equal energy exchange for that as in work with people. I loved creating content that I knew uplifted people and inspired people on YouTube, but I wanted to actually see those transformations in people. It would be super exciting when people would recognize me, let's say in Rome and say, oh my gosh, I'm here because I watched your videos. And that would warm my heart so much, but I realized I want to be working with these people. I want to be supporting them in their life transitions. I want to, I want to support people in making that same leap that I made from the nine to five to their regular jobs. And so all these ideas were coming in, but I realized that in order to become a life coach, in order to become a professional course creator, I needed additional education. I needed tools. I needed resources. I wanted to be professionally certified. And so that's when I decided to make the move to become a certified professional life coach through IPEC, which is the Institute of Professional Excellence in Coaching. So because at that point in time, IPEC was a program that you had to participate in in-person modules, I realized that 
I needed to make a professional move back to Canada. I'm Canadian back to Canada to really establish a foundation in my own business. So I moved back to Canada. I incorporated my business. I started to get a lot more organized around life coaching, taking that on as a career and building courses and educating myself in that way. And Canada felt like the most comfortable place to do that also because I took my in-person modules for IPEC in Toronto. So it took about a year through IPEC to get certified as a professional life coach with multiple certifications, I might add, which have been all very useful, that are all accredited by the ICF. So with that foundation, I knew that I was able and confident to move forward as a business owner, move forward as an entrepreneur who could really support and help people in a very professional way. This was a very beautiful time in my life, but the pandemic happened. And I also realized that if I can live and work anywhere, now that the foundation's been created in my business, now that I've got my certifications and I I know what I'm doing, I wanna travel. I want to have life experiences. The pandemic happened and I felt like I was locked in my box in Toronto. I had a beautiful condo. I was was on the waterfront, like on the lake, and I had a stunning view. I love to bike along the waterfront path each day, but I wasn't able to fully experience that city. I just felt like a lot of my money was flowing into living in a condo when I desire to travel more. And so having that contrast of not being able to go outside and being somebody who still had this dream of traveling and seeing the world, I realized I've got to make another move for myself. So in that time during the pandemic, I decided that I was going to make a leap of faith again. I was going to sell everything I own and move to Bali, Indonesia. I knew that Bali was a digital nomad hotspot and I had a lot of synchronicities in my reality start to push me towards that, that I just decided to say yes. Even though I will say I received a lot of external resistance, just like I did when I quit my corporate job and moved to Italy. And what I mean by that is people telling me that it's not possible or what are you doing? Or like, you know, is this a quarter life crisis, whatever. But I just knew. I just knew what I had to do for myself. And the same thing happened when I made that move to Bali. I made that decision to move to Bali. A lot of people were like, you can't even travel right now. Like this country is closed. A lot of other countries are closed. How are you going to make that happen? I will tell you that I got into Bali in this period of time that was less than a week where Bali was open. I was able to leave Canada. There was nobody in the airports. There was very minimal people on my flights over there. It was such a wild experience from the contrast that has been the time before that in airports, the time now in airports. Anyways, I I sold everything I owned. I documented that on YouTube, that playlist down below as well. And I made this next leap for myself. And I spent two years in Bali, Indonesia. I had a lot of fun establishing myself as a digital nomad, as a life coach in different ways, because this again built this foundation of being able to support people in making their dreams a reality when I've had these experiences myself of moving to different countries, of moving through the motions, of learning how to be an entrepreneur and pivoting in those ways. In Bali, Indonesia, I learned so much about myself and And once the world started to open up again, like fully, as in the beginning of 2023, last year, I left Bali in January and I decided that I was going to go on a journey solely led by my intuition. I would go visit all the places that I always wanted to go to. And so I just let myself be guided. I knew I had big intentions for that year. I feel like this could be its own video topic. Let me know if you guys would like to hear that. But I just knew that this would be a year of really establishing inner security and safety in myself and allowing myself to be led for exactly where I'm meant to be in my life. And that's what happened. Over these last two years, I have developed and continued to add to this program that I've created called the Digital Nomad Academy, which is for people who are ready to make the leap from their nine to five or people who are ready to grow their side hustle or digital entrepreneurs who have had a challenging time creating sustainability in their business. So I decided to create the Digital Nomad Academy with everything that I've come to learn about being a digital entrepreneur over the last eight years. And I continue to add to it each round. There's live coaching in there. If you guys are interested, it'll be linked below. And the promo code, The Rich Life, will actually get you $500 off the pay in full if you would like to join us. It's a beautiful community. And I've been able to then see how me choosing to live out my dreams and my goals and be of service in this way and inspire others and support others to do the same, giving my knowledge, giving, you know, the things that I've learned 
to the people in a way that educates them and teaches them. I can see this in the people. It's what I always wanted through YouTube was for people to know that they're not alone. I joined YouTube so that I could make friends and build a a community for myself. And that's what happened very quickly. And in the Digital Nomad Academy, the same thing's happening, but I'm able to see those transformations in the clients. I'm able to see my clients on Instagram go move to Costa Rica and go do amazing, beautiful things, create offers that really allow them to have freedom. And it's not just for people who want to be a digital nomad. What I'll say, it's basically anyone who wants to create income for help and be a laptop entrepreneur. It's all about creating freedom. And that's what this journey has been for me over the last eight years. I've had to pivot many a times. Like I said, I started out in this sort of bridge phase, doing whatever I could to make enough money, as in having freelance clients, writing and publishing books, being an au pair, and having a YouTube channel and starting to make sponsors. It was like, there was a long bridge period, but in that bridge period, I learned so much that I could then put into the course. And you know, lots of learning, lots of learning in these past eight years. But I wanted to create this video today again to plant evidence in the hearts of those who know that that type of lifestyle is meant for them too. And if you're watching this video and you're that, just claim it. Let me know down below that I am the creator of my reality and I'm choosing to believe that it's possible for me. Anyways, wishing you all a beautiful, abundant day and I'll be seeing you in my next video.